Today, I want to talk about lipoprotein little a or LP little a. This is a cholesterol particle that is super important and most people don't know anything about because it's not tested in standard lab panels. So today I wanna to talk about what it is, how we measure it, how to know whether yours is elevated or not, and how concerned you should be. If you guys remember that TV show, The Biggest Loser, there was a trainer on there named Bob Harper, and he actually had a heart attack and temporarily died. And you would think he was the picture of health. He was metabolically well, he had good labs, but what nearly killed him was this little tiny genetically determined particle called LP little a. So today, let's go through it. Hi guys. Dr. Lily Johnston, board certified vascular surgeon and also a cardiometabolic health specialist on a mission to put myself out of business as a surgeon by detecting and treating vascular disease before you ever need an operation. So let's get into what LP little a is. Uh, the name is super terrible, but it's just a special kind of cholesterol particle and it's a cousin to LDL cholesterol and it's just been upgraded a little bit. So this LP little a has a special add-on protein, like a tail. And that add-on protein is called apolipoprotein in parentheses, lowercase a, little a. And that's just added on to the side of what otherwise looks like a regular ApoB particle. But the add-on, that tail, really changes the behavior of this molecule. That tail acts like Velcro. It makes it super sticky and much more likely to get trapped in the artery wall and form and add to plaque. The other thing that it does is that protein kind of looks like a protein in our clotting cascade, and it makes it interfere with our ability to break down tiny little micro blood clots in our circulation. So I want you to think of LP little a as a cholesterol that has this tail that has Velcro on it. And that Velcro keeps it in the artery wall. And it also has this little DIY quick clot kit in the backpack that makes it form, prone to forming little clots or preventing the body from breaking them down. What you should know under the hood is that that tail comes in kind of short, medium, and long lengths. Each individual person has a different length of the tail in their own ApoA molecule. And this is, nerd, nerd alert, sorry, it comes from something called the Kringle 4 type 2 domain. Uh, it's called Kringle because it resembles the Danish pastry. And the protein is a little swirly folded thing and we can have a few of them or we can have a lot of them. And the reason this is important is because it changes how we measure this particle because one particle in me could have a very short tail but in you might have a very long tail. And so are we measuring the volume of the particle because that way yours is bigger than mine, but if we're just measuring the number of particles, then actually we would have the same lab value. And this is why measuring and interpreting LP little a on a lab test is kind of confusing. So we're gonna go through that because we, of course, have two separate different measurement systems and labs do it differently. We have the mass calculation, which is milligrams per deciliter, mg slash dl, and that is the total mass of the particles and depends on how long that tail is and how many of those Kringle 4 domains you have. The other is called nanomoles per liter, nmol slash l, and that is really how many particles do you have, and you can think of that just like the regular LDL particle measurements that you might get on an advanced lipid panel. And of course, the ranges for what is considered low, medium, and high risk differ based on how we measure it. So let's go through those one at a time. In milligrams per deciliter, less than 30 is low risk, baseline, doesn't impact you, don't think about it again. 30 to 49 milligrams per deciliter is an intermediate category. There's a slightly elevated risk in some studies, but it's not dramatic. And then 50 milligrams per deciliter or higher, that is a high risk category. And almost everybody within that distribution will have some increase in risk and it goes up as your number goes up. All right, let's switch to the nanomoles per liter. Less than 75 nanomoles per liter is that low risk category. Don't think about it again. Uh, 76 up to 124 nanomoles per liter, that's that medium risk category. And then 125 nanomoles per liter or higher is that same high risk category with more risk as the number goes up. So why do we care again? We care because LPA 
increases the risk for two things, actually. We already talked about it getting stuck in the artery wall and causing more plaque to form. That increases risk for heart attack, ischemic stroke, and peripheral arterial disease. But it also can build up in the aortic valve, which is that doorway out of the heart into the rest of the circulation. And it causes that valve to form calcium deposits and get very stiff. And the valve doesn't open. And eventually, if it gets so stiff, you can't actually pump the blood efficiently to the rest of the body. And people get short of breath, they get lightheaded and dizzy. And if it gets bad enough, you might need that valve replaced. So patients with LP little a have premature cardiovascular disease in terms of heart attack, stroke, and limb loss. They also have calcific aortic stenosis. The other really important thing to know about LP little a is that this is genetically determined. It's in your DNA and you inherit this hand of cards from your parents and whatever your value is, it is determined in childhood. You will have a stable level from age five for almost the rest of your life. The only exception to this is uh, postmenopausal women tend to have a slight increase in LP little a, and this is probably the one time where if you're in that intermediate category, you might want to check it again later post-menopause to see if your levels have increased significantly. LP little a does not change based on our diet. It does not change based on our exercise. It is pretty much genetically determined. There are people that talk about LP little a as an acute phase reactant, meaning it changes a little bit in uh, response to inflammatory conditions in the body, like a flu or another major insult like trauma or a burn. It's true, but it's kind of noise. It doesn't change that dramatically. And we will see if, if you measure it repeatedly, which we don't recommend, but if you do, you will see it oscillate within your general risk bin. So if you're low risk, you'll stay low risk. If you're moderate risk, you'll probably stay in that moderate risk category, whether it's up or down by 10%. If you're high risk, you're gonna stay in that high risk category, plus or minus 10, 20% as things change day to day. But overall, this is genetically determined. And if you're in that high risk category, that impacts your chances of developing these conditions. The current guidelines would actually recommend that everybody get tested at least once in their lifetime for LP little a, but some of you will need a little extra nudge. And so I want to be sure that if you have a personal history of premature plaque, like heart attack, stroke, or peripheral artery disease, and you were young in your 40s or 50s, you should get checked for LP little a. If you have a very strong family history of premature cardiovascular disease, you should get checked for LP little a. And if you or somebody in your family have severe aortic stenosis where that valve is calcified and there's no other good explanation for why this happened to you early in life, like a bicuspid aortic valve, then you should get checked for LP little a. Anybody with that discordant risk, like Bob Harper from The Biggest Loser, who was apparently in great health but still died temporarily, then you should get checked for LP little a. And if you are just interested in optimizing your health and wellness and want to detect that particle before it causes any trouble, by all means. Again, our guidelines would suggest that everybody should get checked at least once in life. Let's talk about how common LP little a is because some of you haven't heard of this before. It's become a little more popular in the last five to 10 years, but this isn't regularly checked on anybody's annual lab panel. And some of you have, haven't heard of this. And so you're thinking it's probably pretty uncommon. I'm not sure I should get checked. Uh, actually, 20% of the population will have an LP little a that's higher than that high cutoff we talked about, one in five. So that's somebody sitting around your holiday dinner table, guys. This is very common. And more importantly, best guess we know, less than 1% of the U.S. population has had this measured. Less than 1%, but 20% will have an elevated value and elevated risk. And we can manage that risk if we know about it. But, you know, you can't manage what you don't measure. So we have to do better about making sure people get tested and have that knowledge so that we can then help patients mitigate that risk. We're actually going to do a part two series and we'll talk about what to do if you are in that high risk category. Right now we have no drugs for LP little a, but there are a number of things that we can do today to help reduce your risk if you have elevated lipoprotein little a. So stick around for that. 
put any questions down in the comments below and we will see you for part two. In the meantime, take good care.